right, welcome to What's the Risk, hosted by myself, Daniel Crow, and Peter Mansell, founder of Mansell Financial Group, a financial advice business he founded in 1980. This is a simple video series we hope investors can use to better understand index and portfolio performance, along with addressing some investment questions and dilemmas. This episode is a value of advice story versus just Googling it. And we're joined by Andrew McKimmy, an advisor at Mansell Financial Group. So welcome, Andrew. Thank you. Your Investment Philosophy, a book we wrote, shameless plug, available at Amazon. Disclaimer, please pause and read. Uh, that make us tap to sign. These are simple concepts we'd like investors to better understand risk so they can make informed decisions. This is going to be a little complex. And for anyone watching, I'd just say keep watching. You might not understand it, but it should underline the struggles that someone might have doing this alone. Andrew, I'll just kick it over to you and you can explain what was happening. Thanks, Daniel. This particular person was referred to us by a local accountant we've dealt with quite a bit in the past. Obviously, the accountant could see there was a, an issue coming. This particular person had been medically disabled out of her job a number of years ago. So she was totally and permanently disabled, unable to work due to significant mental health issues. She was TPD out of her super fund and was medically retired from work. She was originally on workers' compensation payments, but then engaged a lawyer to look at having a compensation payout rather than ongoing payments and was paid out a lump sum of around about $300,000 in her early 50s. The lawyer's fees for that were around about $100,000. So she was left with around about $200,000 net to live on. That resulted in a preclusion period for Centrelink until the end of 2025, meaning she wasn't eligible for any uh, disability payments or payments via Centrelink. She was left with $200,000 lump sum, no ongoing income for a number of years. And she also had a mortgage to pay, around about $260,000 owing on a mortgage with an interest rate of about 7.5% and fortnightly repayments of a little over $900 a fortnight. Straight off the bat, she was always going to have some financial difficulty down the track. She really didn't have enough money from that workers' compensation payout to get her through to retirement. That cash has been gradually depleting. She's reached out to us to, to have a conversation about what she can do to sort out her financial situation, because at this point in time, she has around about sixty dollars or $70,000 left in the bank. Like I said, $900 a fortnight in mortgage repayments, which is around about $25,000 a year. And her cost of living is about $20,000 a year. So she was at a point where she's probably a year off running out of money. And at that point, being unable to pay her mortgage. She had around about $800,000 in super. So she had a significant superannuation balance. But the issue is being under 60 years of age, there's potential tax implications in taking money out of super. Now, because she was TPD'd a number of years ago, she had access to that super. She had the ability to withdraw funds. So we had an in-depth conversation about that. My immediate advice to her was the most important thing here is to, to do whatever you can to pay down that mortgage to save your home effectively. But she's already struggling with mental health issues and other health concerns. The last thing you want is to then also be have the financial difficulties coming up. This particular lady circumstances, Andrew discussed with me, and it became apparent that here's somebody with a chronic mental health issue that's caused their career to end. Now she's looking down the barrel of not having enough money to pay her home loan, I can't imagine what that would be like mm -hmm. for somebody who already struggles with mental health, who effectively was pensioned off work because of anxiety and stress. It was, it was just simply wonderful that the accountant recognised that this was an issue and referred her on to Andrew to, to try and help find a better way. A little bit of a fly in the ointment there, you might say, just for the fact that uh, she'd also had some free advice uh, from a, a neighbour who suggested uh, don't get financial advice. Uh, you'll pay tax on whatever you take out of suit, which was going to happen anyway, but she's been advised by a neighbour to basically Google it. Um, and this is someone with complex mental health issues. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think my response to that would be, I'm sure the neighbour was well-intentioned but I'm equally certain that they were hopelessly misguided. Well, they wouldn't have had, a, had an overview of what was going on probably with this this person, but they were just offering advice that didn't take into, into account her own circumstances. Absolutely. And it was worth everything she paid for it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and you're spot on there, Daniel. I think that was one of the, you know, in my initial conversation, she did mention that on the phone that, she didn't want to take money out of super because there'll be, there might be tax implications and her neighbour told her she's going to pay tax. And 
you know, my conversation with her is sometimes in, you know, with, with any financial decision or when we're looking at people's circumstances or providing advice, of course, we want to try to minimise tax and costs and things like that where we can. But you have to look at the bigger picture. What's the bigger issue? And, and my immediate co comment to her was, yes, there's likely to be some tax consequences, but we need to weigh up that versus the alternative. The alternative of not being able to pay your mortgage and running out of money with a two hundred and sixty thousand dollar mortgage and like i said seven and a half percent interest interest rate which is reasonably high she wasn't able to refinance because she has no job so she was really stuck with that bank and there was no benefit no alternative there to reduce that ongoing interest cost um and also you have to consider she's paying interest every year on that mortgage as well so you know my comment to her was you might pay tax to get some money out of super but the flip side is you're paying interest on your mortgage. So there's a cost on both sides of the equation here. And it's about weighing up which one's the, the more palatable cost and which one's going to give the better financial outcome in the mm. long term. It potentially could have saved money if this was done earlier. Look at the lawyer's cut, which is another astounding thing. It's 33% of six figures on the on the compensation payout. Either way, what's done is done. And the goal is basically to help this person now. Given the figure, I'm highly suspicious that that was a no win, no fee lawyer arrangement. So in effect, someone chasing the ambulance and collected the $100,000. That's is an awful lot of advisor hours and that work could have been done for it. Lawyers in that circumstance aren't going to take on a case they don't think they can win. But like you said, Daniel, at the end of the day, that's that's happened. That was in the past. There's nothing we can do about that. So our strategy was then to look at her circumstances and and look at, well, what can we do and what are the tax implications? So I mentioned to her that we really need to have a look at your super fund in depth. There's potentially a tax-free component because she was TPD out of um, her original super fund into a new fund, or she rolled over into a new fund. So there would have been a component that was going to be tax-free. So you know, I said to her, the tax implications might not be as significant as you think, but it's something we need to, to look at. There was quite a bit of money there that she wasn't going to have to hemorrhage the entirety of her super balance, for example, to clear this debt. She could potentially clear the debt and still have a reasonably healthy super balance left uh, until she's eligible for some settling payments or until she hits retirement or age pension age. We originally did some calculations and, and found that around about a third of her balance was tax-free, around about two-thirds was taxable. If she was to withdraw money out of super, she was going to be looking at around about um, $44,500 of tax. So she had a, a large unrestricted component because of that total and permanent disability payout. She could basically immediately withdraw $308,000, pay about $44,500 in tax, pay off the $260,000 debt and be completely debt-free, have around sixty or seventy thousand in the bank to cover her cost of living through to the end of next year, and and bear in mind too, when we talked about budgeting and cost of living, she mentioned that her cost of living were around four hundred dollars a week, uh, excluding the mortgage. Other costs are about twenty 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 one thousand dollars a year, which is extremely low. So she was obviously living extremely frugally because of her concerns around money, um, and that's not ideal and not particularly sustainable for a lot of people as well. But then we thought, well, let's have a look at, is there a better way? Is there a way we can reduce that tax further? So within super funds, if you are totally and permanently disabled, you can take out a disability account-based pension or commence a disability account-based pension. And that allows you to take pension payments from your super fund. And the benefit of the pension payments is there's a 15% tax offset on any tax paid. So effectively, the taxable component of the withdrawals are taxable income, tax at your marginal rate, but you get a 15% tax offset. Now, she had already moved from one fund to another, so she hadn't been TPD in the new super fund, but there was an option we were to, to apply for TPD within this second fund. We looked at the option of, well, what if she applies for total and permanent disability in this second fund and then takes the payment as a pension payment to receive that offset? And what we worked out is that she'd pay around about $27,000 in tax with a, you know, a little bit of work from us we can w immediately work out a saving of $17,000 in tax. So anything she would have paid us is more than recouped in tax savings immediately. And then we thought maybe what we can do is instead of taking the payment in one financial year, we can actually split the pension payment over two financial years. So if you can split that over two years, you get two years worth of tax-free threshold and the, the lower marginal rates. 
You could potentially take a withdrawal in the first year of around about $180,000 and should incur around about $10,000 in tax on that initial withdrawal. That would allow her to clear $170,000 of her $260,000 mortgage. She would still have a mortgage of about $90,000 left, but the benefit is she would be so far ahead on her mortgage repayments, she'd be able to contact the bank and stop her mortgage repayments. That reduces that $900 a fortnight outgoing expense. Then in the second year, once July rolls around into the new financial year, we could then take a second withdrawal of around about $90,000. It might be slightly higher with interest that's accrued on the loan. And the tax on that second withdrawal would be marginal with the tax offset, maybe $1,000 or $2,000. Splitting that payment over two years results in that tax coming from $27,000 down to $12,000. There's another saving of around about $15,000 in tax. Now, we knew that obviously by keeping the mortgage for, for the next eight or nine months, She's going to incur some interest. It was going to be around about four and a half thousand dollars. So sort of the total cost to her is around about seventeen thousand dollars in that scenario. But again, that's a ten thousand dollar saving from our sort of second option. It's nearly a thirty thousand dollar saving on the first option. If we look back at the fact that she was told by her neighbor, don't pay for financial advice, you're going to pay tax to get money out of super. When you look at the actual final figures, I think, you know, a, a tax cost of around about twelve thousand dollars. If if she knew that straight away, she would have she wouldn't have even looked at that as a, a significant issue. Twelve thousand dollars to clear her mortgage is a no brainer. And also the comment from the neighbor of don't pay for financial advice. Well the fact we could save her nearly thirty thousand dollars in in sort of tax and interest immediately clear her mortgage. She has mental health issues and she's dealing with that on an ongoing basis. So to eliminate that financial burden is a massive weight off her shoulders and a massive relief. And also, it just from a cash flow perspective, it frees her up significantly. Looking at the psychological impacts from, um, from a number of different angles, to know that she had a strategy that would eliminate the prospect of losing a home had to be enormously calming for her. Secondly, by doing that, knowing that her regular cash flow outlays for the mortgage were eliminated and suddenly... I can pay my bills, I can live, uh, enormously satisfying. Then, then there's the aspect of, yes, I've paid for some advice, but I've gone from having to spend 44500 to get rid of the mortgage, and my advisor's shown me that I actually only have to spend 17000 I've saved $27,000 less the advisor fee, I'm way in front. So I've actually made a really good decision. My cash flow is better. I've saved my home. I've got a way forward where I can have some confidence. I can't begin to imagine just how positive this has been for this lady, who's obviously a person with challenges. And now she's got a clear way forward to just get on with life. How does a person who has no financial background and has complex PTSD model these types of scenarios? Because you guys um, obviously had the experience to come up with the best solution. It's just astounding that people would think you'd, someone who is struggling with other issues would be able to Google this. If she hadn't got advice, but had listened to the neighbour and just worked out what the tax bill was going to be, she may well have been able to work her way through to take the money out, pay the $44,000, eliminate the mortgage, eliminate the mortgage repayments and go, oh, I'm okay. But with the greatest of respect, she may well be a, a very smart lady, but the chances of her finding out enough about the rules to make those sort of choices I think would be very slim. The cost and the value, and this is the value of advice, things you can't do, don't want to do, don't have the capacity to do, and it becomes more valuable when people are going through other issues in life. In this particular lady's circumstances, you know, from that initial phone call, she was a little bit, I wouldn't say sceptical about getting financial advice. I mean, she did reach out and contact us and, and knew she needed help, but obviously she had had some people making comments to her that sort of implied that you, you shouldn't shouldn't pay for advice. Why do you need a financial advisor? She's now absolutely on board with why you need a financial advisor and can see that there is significant benefit and, and wants to work with us on an ongoing basis. She she really now sees the value in that. And sometimes I think people have to go through that a little bit to understand the, the value. Like you said, Daniel, you know, people have, go through difficult times and that can be where you really see the value of advice. But I think sometimes, um, you know, people going through that, that really opens their eyes to how beneficial it can be. In the main, the vast majority of people just don't know what they don't know. She, unfortunately, 
didn't have the depth of knowledge to go and find out all the answers for herself. The outcome's been wonderful. The value of advice in this instance is just so starkly evident. Having done this for 44 years, I can relate so many similar stories of where people get opportunities from good advice that they otherwise would have missed or they incur costs that they wouldn't have incurred if they just sought to get advice first. So people can see what was behind it. Thanks for your time, Andrew and Peter. No problem, thank you. Cheers, Andrew. Cheers, Daniel.